So, as you can see, we send music to the receiver, but there is no cable connection. And if I put my hand in between, the music stops. So how we do this? Well, using infrared light from this infrared LED. And on the other side we have a phototransistor. The reason I'm showing you this is because as you remember from last week, we have seen how a Tesla coil works and also how it could play sounds. So I'm working on a bigger Tesla coil now, that will also have sounds control. But to remove noise and also separate the high voltage from the low voltage sounds and signals from probably a microcontroller, I need to send the signals using light instead of electricity. Today I will show you a simple circuit that I found that will help us to send the data using infrared light. We will see how to use a phototransistor and detect infrared light, the maximum frequency we could get with this circuit, see if we can play good enough music quality and show you the final circuit. We won't make the Tesla coil part yet, only the light fiber circuit. Before we start make sure that you click the subscribe button and the notification bell. So let's get started. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. They now have an SMT service, meaning that you could get the PCBs with all the components already mounted. You could get really nice results for your PCB projects and receive the board with all the components. Go to JLC PCB and select code now for the SMT assembly. Upload the Gerber files of the PCB. Then check assemble your PCB and select the PCB side. On the next page upload the boom and the pick and place files. Finally, confirm the components you want to solder on your PCB and place your order starting from only $7. What's up my friends, welcome back. Ok, so as we have seen in the intro, I was able to send music from one side to the other using just infrared light. And if I add an optical fiber in between like this one, that should be even better for our project. Just imagine that the Tesla coil will create thousands of volts. You don't want a copper cable connected to the coil and on the other side connected to your hand, because high voltage spikes could get to you and hurt you. That's why we usually use glass or plastic optical fiber and infrared light for that, because glass and plastic are good electricity insulator. So let's see how we do this. To start understanding the circuit, we first look at the phototransistor, which is this simple component. I know that usually transistors have 3 pins, but this one has just 2. But no, this also has 3 pins as well. The third pin is the plastic cover itself. So we have the collector, the emitter and the base is the plastic cover and it will be controlled by light instead of electricity. I take this out from a cheap optic switch like this one. Here we have a phototransistor and an infrared LED as well. On one side of my work table I connect the phototransistor to a visible light LED, a red one in this case. As you can see it's now turned off. But on the other side I have an infrared LED connected to a push button, so when I press the button the LED on the other side will turn on. So how do the phototransistor work then? Our simple circuit for this example is something like this. The collector of the phototransistor is connected to 5 volts and the emitter with a pull down to ground. Have in mind that the phototransistor works as a common BJT, but instead of current placed at the base, we control this with light at the base. When light touches the base, the phototransistor will allow current to pass. When we stop the light, the phototransistor will be turned off. So in this way we turn on the infrared LED on one side, and now the current could pass and the red LED will turn on, it's that easy. You now must wonder, why we are using infrared light instead of just normal visible light? Well that's because we are already surrounded by visible light. If the phototransistor will be sensible to visible light, even the light from the sun will activate it. Also infrared has a higher wavelength, that our eyes can see, so we could use this component with remotes, light switches and more without the problem of seeing the light, each time that we change the TV channel for example. Ok, so the circuit of today's example is this one, so take a close look. For the transmitter we have just a simple BJT transistor, that will be controlled by the audio signal placed at its base or maybe a signal from a microcontroller. The BJT transistor will then control the light of an infrared LED connected at the emitter and that's it. 
the receiver has a bit more components. First of all, the phototransistor will receive the light from the transmitter. And that is connected through a capacitor to the positive input of an LM386 amplifier. In that way, we could amplify the poor signal from the phototransistor and then we could connect the output to another microcontroller or directly to a speaker, in case that we send audio signal. So I've mounted these circuits on my breadboard. Here we have the transmitter with just a BJT and an infrared diode, and the audio jack as the input. And here we have the receiver with the phototransistor and the amplifier and the output is connected to a small speaker. So just like that, as you can see, I can play music from the smartphone to the other side of the work table, without electrical wires. But of course, in this case, the infrared LED and the phototransistor must be face to face, and that's not exactly what I'm looking for. But we can fix that with some optical fiber. I have this fiber that is used for high-speed internet connection and routers. This one is made of glass and is more for a laser-based transmitter and won't be very good with our poor infrared LED. For that I have this optical fiber made out of plastic. This one is not made for this purpose, but we could use it for our project. So as you can see I now place the infrared LED facing the opposite side of the receiver. I now put the optic fiber in front of the LED and the phototransistor and as you can see we now receive the music again. Of course, with infrared light we can't see anything. But look, I now use this fiber with a visible light, so we can see how the light is traveling through the fiber. Optical fiber works something like this. We usually have a glass interior called the core. And wrapped around this core we have another layer of glass, and this is called cladding. The refractive index of the core is higher than the cladding, and that results in a total internal reflection. If the input light is inserted with a decent angle, the light will never get out, only at the other end of the fiber. Optic fibers is a long subject, so maybe we'll see more about that in a communication theory video. I've also tested the maximum frequency of this setup, and above 15 kHz, the sound was difficult to hear for human ears. But the signal that we receive is still good, up to around 80 kHz. So make sure that the communication that you want to use is below this speed, otherwise you will get errors. The audio quality is not the best, because of the poor amplifier that we are using, and also the noise from the light and the phototransistor, but it will be good enough for the Tesla coil project. Also, for distances more than 1 or 2 meters, you might want to use a better optical fiber and a more powerful LED for the transmitter. So guys, this is more or less how I'm planning to send audio signals using infrared light and an optic fiber. I might improve a little bit the receiver, and maybe a better fiber as well. Using this circuit you could also send digital signals, if you want to maybe create some sort of remote, or just communicate two Arduinos one to each other, using infrared light instead of copper cables and electricity. If you like this tutorial and learn something new, give a like to the video. Also consider subscribing and activate the notification bell. A huge thank you to all my patrons for supporting my projects. So thanks again and see you later guys.